welcome to another episode of Crew Equip. This will be our last one for the month, and then I'll see you guys in October where we're going to talk about harvest time. But today, we are going to talk about, or tonight, we are going to talk about our last S, which is sex. Now, if you see right here, I have these hands being held, and if you'll notice, there is a small ring on the finger of the lady. That is because... I don't want to focus so much on sexual immorality. I think that a lot of times when we discuss um, sex from a, uh, a Christian perspective, it's normally um, on the offense against the ways not to do it. Um, and I want to add a little balance without uh, not necessarily negating that, but also adding balance because I believe that sex was given to people for our good. Um, if done in the right context, uh, sex is empowering. And so we're going to talk about that um, heavily because I don't want us to focus so much on uh, the immoral part of it without talking about um, why it's there or, or the benefits of it. Because I feel like, especially more than ever, that um, in a sense, sex is like fire. Oh, well, hold on. Got, got got a little emotional, got ahead of myself. Welcome. <laughs> I do not, I want you to have the opportunity to leave. If you came here, just in case, and you 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 don't want to talk about this topic, if this is a little too heavy for you, um, then hopefully the other places on the internet are just as safe. But I want to give a spiritual perspective um, um, and introduce the concept about uh, one of the S's. We discussed suicide, we discussed um, sobriety, where we discussed more about um, the use of drugs, and now we're talking about our last S, which is sex. And so I want to make sure that, uh, I, I would love for you, if, if you don't wanna talk to me, I want you to talk to your family, I want you to talk uh, to your resources about it, uh, especially godly influences um, about sex, but sex itself, in and of itself, is not bad just like fire in and of itself is not bad. Um, and I was reminded of scripture discussing sex in, in, in the form of a fire. In the book of Proverbs, which is a book which is talking to young men about how to operate, one of the things that they constantly talk about is fleeing the immoral woman and clinging toward the woman called wisdom. And so um, in one verse in Proverbs, it speaks about, uh, let me see, Proverbs chapter 6, and I think we should start at verse 25. Don't lust in your heart for her beauty. So this is the evil woman. Don't lust in your heart for her beauty or let her captivate you with her eyelashes. That, that's weird, right? Because now one of the biggest things is girls are growing out those, you know, well, not growing them, you know, they're, they're, they're buying them, you know, and, you know, kind of got them big eyelashes. Anyway, um, so even back then, eyelashes were a thing. I'm, I, I haven't met any guys that I know that are attracted to eyelashes, but clearly it was a thing. And then it says uh, in verse 26, for a prostitute's fee is only a loaf of bread, but an adulteress goes after a precious life. I am not calling girls who have those eyelashes prostitutes. Don't, don't put that on me. I didn't say that. Don't sound bite me. I'm just saying that that's what they're talking about here. But here's the verses I want you to listen to. Can a man embrace fire and his clothes not be burned? Can a man walk on burning coals without uh, scorching his feet? So it is with one who sleeps with another man's wife, no one who touches her will go unpunished. Okay, so that, that's first off talking about adultery, but think about it. In this generation, more than ever, we are constantly enticed by beauty. Uh, women are wanting to be beautiful. The, the, the people that they're looking for in every generation, of course, women want to be beautiful, but for the purposes of snaring a man. Uh, of entrapping him, of, of taking him for all of his resources um, for using him, uh, because, and I think it has to do somewhat with the American ideals of, you know, getting, of consumerism, where I want to, um, get more and give less, 
And so if we can give the least amount and get the most from somebody, I see it with both uh, men and women uh, where we are at an assault against each other. And I think the reason why, partially, is because um, of the fact that we have dropped away from all things concerning holiness and the holiness of matrimony, and we've picked up the world's ideas. So let me first talk about the good things about sex when it comes to it on a natural level. When we participate in sex in a committed relationship, in a committed, uh, uh, in a committed healthy relationship, it leads to um, and I do mean marriage. I'm not just talking about a boyfriend you've had for seven years. I, it leads to intimacy, attachment, appreciation. Number four is vulnerability, your ability to be vulnerable in front of that person, and trust. Okay? There are chemicals that are let off, such as oxytocin, the same ones uh, that also uh, dopamine, there's, there's releases of cortisol that happens, uh, that, that's the stress hormone that happens um, when you participate in sex. And it should often lead you to these five things and be cultivated in a, in a quality relationship. And if you notice, based on the fact that we have dropped off commitment, we picked up hookup culture, and we have decided to be, I don't know, city boys or city girls, whatever. We've decided to go that route. Forgive me. We've decided to go that route. What has ended up happening is we have people losing intimacy. Everybody's uh, losing attachment. It's like, Men hate women and women hate men and men are going their own way because they're like, oh, well, the traditional values are no longer being honored on one hand. So we don't want to have traditional values on ours. And the sad thing about it is because when there is a strong level of feminism and what I mean by it is not that uh, there shouldn't be equality of opportunity, but what I mean by it is when we desire to where we push down or we degrade um, one sex or the other, the people who suffer the most are the weak. And oftentimes physically weak is women and children suffer the most. So with the, the rise in um, radical feminism, women and children have suffered the most. And so let's look at how intimacy, attachment, appreciation, we definitely can see there's a lack of appreciation of each other, especially in this culture of, of hooking up, of having sex just for the point of just enjoying each other's body carnally. We can see how that has affected us, um, where we don't appreciate each other, we're not vulnerable toward each other, and we definitely do not trust each other. And the reason why is because there has to be commitment. Again, we said sex is like fire. So think about it. If I have fire, fire can heat my home when it's under its right, um, when it's under the right parameters, when there's control around it, when there are people who know what they're doing under the right parameters, fire can heat my home. It can also burn my home to the ground. And anything that fire touches is changed forever, all right? There is something that happens when you have sexual intercourse, your body releases chemicals that cause you to pair bond, meaning that it causes you to want to connect with that person. And so if you are consistently doing that with so many partners, it becomes harder for you to bond with someone else. It becomes where, oh, well, you know, you can say, oh, I can participate in this activity and feel nothing for that other person. And so why are divorce rates raising higher and higher? And then, you know, we've, we've, uh, why do we not value marriage the way that we once did? Why is adultery becoming easier and easier in our generation? Because we have made sex an Olympic sport or an activity instead of what it really is, which is a covenant a physical covenant that shows a spiritual understanding. There's something spiritual. There's something natural. There's something soulful that happens when sex is done, when sex is participated in. And I don't care. Again, we talked about it last week. I know we're in a postmodern age where everybody says, hey, I don't believe that. 
that doesn't make it untrue. All right? Fight with your Bible. Don't fight with me. You know what I'm saying? So we'll, we'll take it to the scripture in a second. Fight with the statistics. Don't fight with me. I have no problem discussing anything in the, in, in the comments or, you know, however you want to reach out. Um, I, I enjoy a good argument, but I think it's pretty much set in stone that all of this, these removal of boundaries causes the suffering of more people. It causes greater levels of loneliness. It causes greater levels of depression. And so we cannot continue to glorify the very things that are destroying us. All right, I would like to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. And we'll read a little bit. It says, run from sexual immorality. So God's expectation for his people is not to be like um, a glacier in the middle of a hot room. All right. If there is sexual immorality going on, God says, run. Don't just stick it out and be strong. Don't be like, oh, I can handle this because I'm spiritually mature. If you're spiritually mature, you obey the word of God. The word of God says, run. Every sin that a, ma that a person commits, can commit, is outside the body. On the contrary, the person who is sexually immoral, the person who participates in sex outside of the dictates that have been given to us by the kingdom of God, sins against their own body. Don't you know that your body is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? God gave you your body to be used as a temple. You are not your own. You are not here to just glorify the desires of your own flesh. You're not here just for experiences. Oh, well, I, I saw um, a lady on TikTok and she was talking about and she is a licensed therapist talking about how it's OK if you want to go out and be very promiscuous. It's OK to go for it because you only live once and you don't want to be a grandma wishing that you did it. How many people have been caught up in relationships or made people that they didn't plan on making because they were promiscuous? So many people I know are in, uh, 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 like, think about it. We talk about baby mama drama and baby daddy issues and, you know, all these people who have so many kids um, from people who were not in committed relationships. At one point, you really liked each other, at least for the night. And now all of a sudden, there is so much hatred and so much vitriol that comes from you. And why is that? Because the, pra uh, the, the, the pair bonding, not the prayer bonding, the pair bonding has been destroyed. And so what's going to fill up that place? The demonic. What's going to fill up that place? Um, the, the hurt, the shame, the depression the longing to be with that person, but the incapacity, the shame of saying, hey, I should, we should have never been together in the first place. I should have never this, that, and the third. And so it's important that you understand that as, as the people of God, we are called to flee from sexual immorality. It says that you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. You do not glorify God by having multiple partners. So if you're one who I who caught up with me well after the time you've already had multiple partners, stop it. That's what the Bible says. All right. So cut it out and move toward holiness. And so uh, our next scripture I'd like to go to discusses marriage. And that is in Hebrews 13, 14. No, 13.4, excuse me. Marriage must be respected by all and the marriage bed kept undefiled because God will judge immoral people and adulterers. Think about that. Now, it doesn't say when you die. A lot of times when we see God will judge, we think when you die. <laughs> no, there is judgment that's already out there in the earth. Like if I jump into the water, I will get wet. Right. Unless God supernaturally does something, the science of it, the expectation of it, without me praying about it, without me believing in it, I will get wet. 
there is a judgment set up for the sexually immoral. All right. You will, if you desire to connect with so many people, it will be very hard for you to connect with anyone. If you desire to uh, have uh, sex outside of wedlock, then when the time, if you, if there are things that you do where you don't respect the fence of marriage, then what's going to happen is while you're outside of it, then you're not going to respect the fence while you're inside of it, meaning that it will lead to divorce potentially if you don't work on it with the word of God, because now you've created a breach. You've given yourself um, the ideas of other people. Um, a lot of times, especially as I, I begin to talk with the youth that we have here and we discuss all types of topics. I ask them questions and, you know, they know I'm crazy enough to ask. And, you know, I built an environment around where they're crazy enough to give me honest answers. And we just discuss things from a, a perspective where um, I'm not going to judge them, but I'm going to tell them, you know, their, their ideas are wrong. And in one interaction, I'm like, think about it. If you are consistently um, having all these other people in your life and then you decide to get with one individual, there's going to be something that, the, uh, that so many other people did that you liked that you don't like about this other person. And that's, that, that could be even with dating. If you date so many people and then all of a sudden you decide, but we're not going to talk about dating. Let's just keep it where we're at and focus on sex. If you are consistently having sex with multiple partners and then all of a sudden it's going to be very hard for you to settle with the one that you're uh, assigned to, the one that you're with, the one that you have uh, submitted your life to, because in the back of your mind, you'll have the, you'll have you'll romanticize other partners that you've had before. And that's going to be a hurdle that you've had. Now, I'm not, I, I don't want uh, you to think, oh, yeah, you know, he doesn't understand things of that nature. I want you to understand that if you consistently do that, it's just science. It's not me saying, oh, yeah, you know, um, I'm judging you. It's me trying to call out to you and say, think about that. All right, because you might, there, there are people that you might not like their personality, but that aspect of the relationship was great and you stuck around too long. And then now you're in a situation where you're you're with somebody that you can't stand. You're with somebody who you know is bad for you and you're locked in because of the chemical reactions, because of the spiritual nature of it, where you are, um, in a sense, married to that person, because we know that in the beginning, God created uh, sex for the purpose of um, showing physical marriage. And so it's going to be very hard for you as you lay in bed next to the one that you've desired to be next to for you to stay um, faithful, even in your mind. And so um, you definitely need deliverance. You need prayer. Um, you need to uh, resist the enemy so that he flees. I don't want to give you the idea that there's nothing you can do. But before you even go there, don't go there. Before it even is presented to you, Flee from it. Now, again, just like fire, fire is everywhere, okay? Meaning that in this generation, there is more um, pornography, more easily accessed, um, uh, more opportunities uh, to engage in illicit practices, more open types of conversation, more immorality than was 10, 20, 30 years ago. And so you have to, again, we used the scripture last week about being vigilant, being sober, because our enemy is constantly roaming. He is constantly roaring. He is constantly looking for a way to get in and destroy your life, to make things difficult for you to follow the will of God. And so God has given us marriage in order to protect us from something else that he gave us, which was sex. He gave it to us. He gave us marriage to protect us because he knows that without doing things according to the pattern, it could utterly destroy and distract our lives. And so maybe I'm talking to somebody who has never thought about it, but I'm possibly talking to somebody who's not only thought about it, but engaged in it. And you, I would like to pray for because you are not so broken that God cannot heal. You are not so taken and lost 
that God cannot find you. God cannot pull you in and make you his own. And so I want to pray for you today. Father God, I thank you for those who are um, here, who have participated in our final S. Um, we've discussed all three of these. We've discussed um, sobriety in the second week. And the first week, um, we talked about, uh, let's see, what did we talk about, Lord? I'm going to get it. That's funny. We talked about suicide. We talked about sobriety. And this week we're talking about sex, Lord. And so, Lord, I want you to take my words, the words that they've heard, and I want you to pass the, the words that were yours. I desire that you would pass through their mind and allow them to go into their heart and cause genuine change. Lord God, this is a serious issue. There are people right now who are listening to me, who are seeing me right now, who have struggled with their sexuality, whether it be heterosexual or homosexual. There are people right now who have struggled with having multiple partners. There are people who have been abused sexually, who have been hurt, who um, have lost hope in the idea of prayer um, and pair bonding, who have lost hope in the idea of finding uh, someone who they can connect with because they've uh, been broken hearted or they, they have been uh, connected to the wrong people for too long. And so, Lord, I speak right now to their heart and declare hope. Lord God, I speak blessing over them that they would get back on course, that you would use their life for your grace and your mercy, that you would cause them to be pulled out of the fire, God, that they would be like um, that they would be like wood plucked from the fire and that they would speak and tell others not to go down that way, that you would make them like a voice that cries out in the wilderness, God, that you would cause them even to be used in, in this time and in this season. God, right now, I thank you that they are blessed and I speak life over them. God, I ask that these words, um, um, that they would cause them to flee from sexual immorality, that you would cause them to, to follow after your course, to understand and to, to, to walk in a way that would cause them to know that marriage is the way by which to protect them from the wiles of the enemy. And if they choose not to marry, that they would choose to walk with you and not to walk in the ways of the flesh. Lord, every place where they've been burned by this, um, by this obstacle, I ask right now that you bring forth your healing self. I speak blessing, healing, restoration, salvation over them now. And Lord, I thank you that you will use them for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So look, y'all been with y'all been through it with me these past three weeks. Um, obviously, we are not having it next week. We are going to uh, have um, one of one of the things that we do here is we have uh, a party sort of at the end of the month uh, where we all get together. Um, we call it a uh, crew night. And we have the kids get together. We have one of them speak and talk about some of the stuff that they heard and um, just for a brief moment. And then we have games and food and all that kind of stuff. We would love to see you. We would love to fellowship with you. Um, we're here out in Carpentersville, Illinois, and um, we're at Faith Walk Harvest Center. Um, I believe the uh, address can be entered right here. <laughs> and so uh, I will see you guys um, next month, and we will be talking about the harvest and harvest season. All right, y'all have a good one. See you next time.